everyone, my name is Taryn and thank you so much for stopping by my channel, Nicole Flower House. My channel is all about my cut flower garden and I'm located in zone 7B. It is the end of January when I shot these videos, so I just wanted to give you an update on what I have growing and what the garden looks like. This first bed here has my anemones in it. I do have several of my beds covered with multiple layers of frost cloth. I don't have any plastic on my garden beds right now. I've read that you can't have greenhouse plastic touching PVC or it ruins the greenhouse plastic and my hoops are PVC so I just haven't looked more into that. If anyone does have plastic on their PVC hoops, let me know if it's working out for you or not. I do have one anemone that has shot up a bloom. It is the first of the season. I'm really excited about this. Typically the first flowers I get are always a little on the short side, but as these plants get more sunlight and more established, these flowers will get taller. My ranunculus beds are also covered in the multiple layers of frost cloth. We've had a much colder winter this year than the past few years, so I have like, I think three or four layers of frost cloth over these beds. We're getting into the mid 20s overnight, so that is pretty cold for us here in 7B. So I've been taking extra precautions on my ranunculus at the end of this bed where I didn't have the frost cloth coming all the way down to the soil level enough, there is damage to these plants. I'm confident that they'll rebound though. I know they're not very happy. So there is dead foliage, but there is also green new growth. So I do plan on spending some time coming in here and cutting out the damaged foliage and doing a better job with insulating these beds with the frost cloth on the edges. I am especially excited this year to see what my ranunculus are going to do. I don't know if you remember from last year, but I accidentally forgot to plant my ranunculus in the fall. Time just kind of got away from me and I ended up having to plant my ranunculus in January. The pictures you see on the screen are from not last season, but the season before. Those flowers were epic. They were abundant. They had really long stems. They were absolutely gorgeous. Now I did get ranunculus the following season, but it was only like a few bouquets worth and not very many. They did not well, which I am not surprised because if I missed my window in the fall, I probably should not have planted those in January and just have waited until the spring. This year, I did not mess up my timing, and so I'm hoping for another epic ranunculus season. Now this bed of ranunculus has a lot of weeds in it. I'm unsure if I should be pulling all of these weeds out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. My thought was that they may be actually insulating these plants and keeping them a little warmer. Across the top of my hoops, I just have some garden stakes attached with some wire. The purpose of that is to keep the frost cloth from touching the plants. We've had a few weekends now with snow and ice and the cloth itself will not hold up. Here are some tulips that I have planted in crates. I ran out of garden space in my beds, so I thought I would give this method a try. I haven't done it before, so I'll keep you updated. These are Lysianthus plants that I'm attempting to overwinter. They did not bloom for me last year, but I'm hoping that if I keep them alive throughout this chilly winter, they will bloom for me in the spring and summer. However, I'm not counting on these for my Lysianthus. And this year I had old seed that I tried to germinate. It was pelleted, so I wasn't sure if it would, and it has not germinated yet. So I bought some plugs from Farmer Bailey. They are super magic apricot. So I do have a backup plan if these plants don't flower and since my seeds did not germinate. Here is an update on my roses. I have pruned all of my roses back. 
I am going to be moving these hopefully within the next two to three weeks to a new garden bed but I wanted to get the pruning done first so they could recover a little bit from that before I dug them up and moved them. All of these varieties you see here are shrub roses, so they are pruned to be open in the center. Here is a dahlia bed. I have not cleaned up my dahlias yet. I am experimenting again with leaving my dahlias in the ground over the winter. I heard from Sarah on Bloom and Gray that what causes the tubers to die in the winter if you leave them in the ground is moisture rather than cold. So I'm hoping that these are going to be just fine. Here is my Strawberry Hill rose that I've pruned. This is the first time I've pruned a climbing rose and I watched plenty of videos on how to do this. So hopefully I did a good job. When I transplant her and move her to the new garden, I will have a very nice trellis for her to climb. I also have some hellebores blooming. It's so nice to have flowers this time of year and they also tolerate shade. Every winter, I tell myself I'm going to get more of these plants and I never really get around to it, but maybe this season will be the year that I expand my collection. I want to dry these flowers. If you have experience drying hellebores specifically, leave me some advice in the comments below. I tried to find information that is specific to this type of flower and it was kind of hard to find anything so if you have experience doing this, let me know the best method that you used, if you hung them upside down or if you use silica. I'm going to use both methods and see what worked and what didn't and which I like better. Last season, I started casually collecting things that I wanted to dry, but I didn't take care of them. I left them sitting out and in the direct sun and the heat, so everything became very brittle and not usable. Out here in the front, I have daffodils poking through. I'm really happy to see these coming up. Last year, my daffodils were very late and they actually came up after my tulips, which was backwards and it was a little odd. These are gladiolas. I think I need to cut all this foliage back so they can bloom again in the summer. If they do bloom, it'll all be at the same time. It won't be a succession, but that's okay. Last week's video, I talked about my plans for a pollinator garden, and this is the spot I'm going to put it. I'm so happy everyone is so excited about it. I am too. It is right outside our front window so I can watch it. I will leave this eucalyptus in here and herbs but I will clear out all the weeds and maybe even the paver stones. I'm not sure if I'll leave those, but there is plenty of space for all those seeds that I have collected for the pollinator garden. I'm really happy to have this large pollinator garden for the front because this season I need to do better with cutting my flowers sooner in the back. Once things get pollinated, they go to seed and they don't last as long in the vase. So I want to do more frequent cuttings and that just means that there's going to be less flowers to go around for the bees and butterflies. I'm sure there will still be plenty, but having this pollinator garden in the front just makes me feel a little better about that. I know I said earlier that I was going to dry these hellebores, but they were looking pretty limp. So I wanted to rehydrate them before I dried them. I don't know if this makes sense or not, but I wanted them to look their best before I started the drying process. I'm just gonna let them drink some water and pump up a little bit, then I will hang them to dry or put some in silica. Well, that is all for today's cut flower garden update. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And the best way you can support me and my channel is to subscribe and share it with your flower loving friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.